All right, so let's let's look at some of these mods here. Uh, okay. So I think I'll wait on the prop. I don't even know if this mod is still updated, but I would like to get into like detailing stuff. Um, let's turn on precision engineering. Network extensions too is the uh, the road mod that I was using. Uh, sharp junction angles, I think like. Now see, it's two years ago though, so I don't know. Uh, it's not. Maybe I should should hang on to that. This is a four-year-old mod. I'll I'll go through the workshop and find the updated versions of that. Let's not worry about that right now. Let's do instead the unlimited stuff, and we will unlock the progression milestones. I will never use this one again. This one is what caused me so much grief. People coming in and, uh, you know, when I, when I turned this off, I just had that massive river of, uh, of people. Yeah, I remember the junctions being really nice, but like I said, I want to I wanna find the newer one. I mean, I guess I can right now. If we're going to be totally casual about it, we might as well be casual about it. See, it says it's not compatible. So let's do. Uh, how do we even find this crap? Now oh, whatever. I should be able to find it right from the workshop. You think, right? There you go. Uh, this is not what I want. Uh, sharp angle? Sharp junction? What was this called? Let's go back. Go back. Sharp junction angles. Yeah, this is just a bunch of pre-built junctions. Uh, what about sharp angles? Sharp textures? No, I don't know. I'll have to look at it a little bit. A little bit later, we'll have to find some more, but uh, that should be good for now. So let's go ahead and jump back into it. Yeah, Arid Plains, that's what it was. I don't know. I mean, I kind of like the, the, <clears throat> the map. We could try something else. I have looked at some of these. I imagine the archipelago would be a pain. This might be good. The Dust Bowl, this actually kind of looks like there's a large amount of area, but it is a disasters map, so are we asking for trouble here? Oh, let's just see what this one looks like. Yeah, I'm sure the uh I'm sure Streamlabs has a bunch of amazing stuff that I can use. It does look like they've got some pretty cool things, so I'll definitely be looking at that for future streams. Uh, crap, we're still limited to this. This actually looks pretty pretty much like the old one. <laughs> Just a larger river. That actually, holy crap, what is going on with the map there? That looks like... that looks awful. <laughs> However, if we expand that way, maybe I can put some hydroelectric. Okay, so let's go ahead and do kind of the same setup. Should we do like actual highway with sound barriers? I could do that. Uh, not really feeling that. Uh, not really. The the hydroelectric dam. Uh, it's it's 
based on the elevation and so that requires a lot of terraforming and so I think w when I did try it my best success with it was digging a really deep hole basically uh, because the rivers themselves just are not landscaped to provide a lot of height to make them work so you know looking at these with the rapids that they had maybe there's a little bit of depth there but the most effective dams are when you apparently when you dig down into the the riverbed and just create a, a very steep angle of elevation there I'm sure there's a YouTube video that actually tells you the proper way to, to do that but that's all I remember from when I was trying to do it in the, in the series and afterward. Um, what is this? With the bike lane? I don't think I want people in the highway in a bike lane. Let's just, let's just put it regular. I got myself into trouble by doing this. In fact, let's not do this either because I did get into trouble with this. Let's not repeat what we just did five minutes ago. Uh, medium road, maybe set that down. thing is if I don't do it right now then I'm gonna limit myself in how much space I'll have in the future like I'm pretty sure I used roundabouts as my initial my initial setup for getting traffic through I guess I could still do that that might actually be okay let's try a roundabout again that's a lot of money though but we, uh, we're not worrying about that anymore because we have infinite money so rather than make a big old ugly highway thing going off this way because it's not gonna go anywhere you know it would hit the river and then I guess maybe I could build a bridge over there now yeah, you know what let's go ahead and do that is that too loud because uh that's extremely loud in my ears. I could just do like a nice decorative. Yeah. Let's, let's get into the audio. What even is that? Effects? Interface? I don't even know what that would be under. Um, okay. Yeah, maybe I should do just the master volume down just a little bit. Like 65, and then we can bring up the music to offset that. We'll give that a try. Let's do. I, I, I don't. I don't even know right now what I want to do with this. Two-way highway. That's just like an old-fashioned highway. Yeah. Let's go back to road. Let's just put on a large road. We'll give them some grass so it at least looks somewhat decent. And uh, we can go all the way now. Come into what is it? This, this. Where's the one-way stuff? Three by. This one. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, can I get a little bit of bend in that? There we go. Mm -hmm. Stop. Stop. Okay. And then I gotta do this to change the direction. Okay. So, see, this is why I would have a roundabout at the beginning, because then I could just shoot something off there. I don't really want that to be a major intersection. So we'll have to settle for coming down here a bit. And, you know, there are, there, there, there's a thing of too many roads, and maybe this is a problem now. select snap to yeah I really would like to put more roundabouts into the city focus that a little bit I don't think I want an intersection right here though I really should just make it a roundabout 
because otherwise, you know, I don't want them coming running off the highway and then slam right into a traffic intersection. What if we do something like that? I think that'll be far enough away, maybe it won't cause any problems. So, this will be kind of the central downtown, I guess. Probably put a road... Now, the thing about rivers is that they uh, create a lot of choke points, which is sort of a downside there. Uh, I happen to live in an actual city right now that uh, has a lot of that crap going on, and it is miserable to drive in. I do not like it. So if we can stay off of this and just come in here, I guess we can add more to that side. That's fine. Let's make that straight line again. Okay. So we'll kind of keep that disconnected until we get to, say, here. I think that'll be long enough. I don't know, though. Like, if this is going to be a major continuation of a highway, and it really kind of isn't because it's got traffic and all that, I don't know. Maybe we'll just leave it that way. We'll incorporate the highway as its own major area, major road as we build along either side of it. Yeah, I mean, if we could incorporate quarantine, I'm sure we could definitely, definitely help out with that. I would like to really focus on public transport, though, for the traffic problems. That's one thing that in all the city building games that I've played, uh, I don't really focus on, just because I feel like the road system is a lot more effective and it's just, you know, I don't really understand the the details of the transport system because, you know, you, you got to have, for, for optimizing that and making it actually worth something to your city, you need to have your stops a certain amount of distance away, which I guess in the real world equates to like a quarter mile. Um, but just figuring that out, I think, is what's kind of put me off of a really solid public transport system in these kind of games, but I'd really like to actually have something like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I, I'm necessarily going for a, a totally green utopia, but I definitely appreciate efficiency in uh, in this sort of setup, and I'd, so I'd like to actually have something that isn't just nice to look at visually, but just actually works mechanically. Um, so, I, you know, I would like to see low pollution, low traffic, and a system that actually works and is sustainable. Obviously these simulation games aren't totally 100% realistic to the real world. I mean, because technically these are socialist dictatorships. <laughs> you know, I, I am the mayor slash presidente. Um, one thing that I actually kind of missed from uh, the old SimCity games, obviously you were in charge of those games too, but they there was the implied uh, city council there, you know, you had your advisors that were were there to tell you what you were doing wrong. Uh, so, uh, whatever. Uh, we're gonna do, I guess I could do a riverfront thing there. So let's continue that, that pathway. That is not the right pathway. Where the hell is that? Too many roads. Too many roads. And there should be more roads in this, surely. Small, heavy roads. Oh, I guess not. Okay. Where is this road? How am I not seeing this road? Is it that? Oh, because it's already got an overlay on it.
So if we do maybe like that, I can get a nice bend on that road. That's a little bit too much. Do I need to turn that down still more? Because that is kind of ratcheting in my ear. Let's actually bring this, bring a road down from there. Forget, there is actually a ratio to get a really good bend. That turns out kind of alright, but the end the end is just too tight. It's not going in the right direction. That's better. I like that a lot better. Well, but the thing about the volume is that you know, the, the volume in my headset is a lot different than how it records. So if I'm going to have to turn it down, I'm going to have to turn it down on my end. Alternatively, I can just move my headset a little forward, and then I don't have to worry about it. Okay, well, let's just continue on with the road building for now. Um, you know, maybe... I would kind of like to use boulevards and nice-looking roadways. But I'm not really sure where I want this to go. So if we're going to follow the, the river this way a little bit, probably have it go this way and then cross over the highway at some point. So I'm looking at maybe... I don't know, I'm starting to lay this one out kind of like I do all my others. Let's just cent center a, a nice residential area. Ah, I keep picking the wrong one. Okay, maybe something like that. And then let's pick uh, maybe just a nice grass lane. continue on, because I'm thinking, you know, I'd kind of like a little bit of a little bit of a protected residential. Game's main volume. Like 50% maybe? See how that sounds. Oops. That sound a little bit better. Hey, Belladonna, how's it going? We're just kind of testing things out and finding finding a good level right now. So you are front row to the shit show right now. Another thing to consider, too, is that uh, sound in headphones is much different than speakers. It just, it treats it differently, so... When I get to the actual video of this, it might be uh, a little off. And, uh, you know, that's one thing that I don't actually do a whole lot of uh, for my Let's Plays, is a lot of post and editing and all that stuff. What, what you see is actually pretty raw. Um, my old recording software, my BB Flashback, actually had a built-in editor, and that was really nice. And I'd probably still be using it, except that it only records at 30 frames a second, and it doesn't really like the uh, 1080p. So if they ever updated that software to be meant for modern recording, I'd probably go back to it. Although, I'm pretty satisfied with, with uh, Marillis. 
software that I've got right now is, is pretty good, and it's always cheap. I mean, it's it's like always on permanent discount for some reason. It's always on permanent sale, so you can pick it up for like 20 bucks. Um, but it, it records really, really fine quality, in my opinion, and I usually record at uh, a lot lower quality as well. So the fact that it still comes out decently. You mean my first Sim series or the the uh, narrated one? Uh, actually, the uh, the Sunlit Tides series, uh, I did a lot more editing in After Effects. I've never really been into uh, Premiere. Adobe Premiere is just kind of... It, it, it's nice, but at the same time, it just is really clunky for me. And it doesn't produce very tiny videos, which is a major problem for me, uh, especially for uploading. You know, uploading a 30 gigabyte video is a little beyond what I think is necessary for, for Let's Playing. Uh, but no, the, the Sunlit Tides one was kind of a combination. I'm pretty sure I did record that one with uh, that other software just because it is a little janky. Um, but when I did the editing, a lot of that was in After Effects, which is not what it's meant for. After Effects is definitely more of a post-production kind of software. It's not very good for editing, but uh, I know it a lot better than I do pretty much any other editing software. Uh, where where am I at? I don't really want to put in all the blocks right now, so let's go ahead and swap over and start putting in some of the some of the zones. Yeah, castaways. I I really actually had wanted to do more with the Sim series. I. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it during my was my 10,000 subscriber video that I had this really big plan to do like a Sim City Sims let's play where uh, because Sims uh, the Sims 3 has a, a map editor and so I was going to build a map kind of over time using all the the various Sims 3 stuff because they're I think the Pets expansion had like a, a ranch house and it kind of had that western style and uh, I don't know the time that that would take I mean most of most of what I've done in Let's Playing and my YouTube and all that uh, was done whilst I was unemployed I mean I started doing it when I did not have a job and so, obviously, I had a lot more time for, for stuff like that. Um, right now, I don't have that much time. That is something that I would like to kind of get into a little bit more. It's kind of why I'm streaming, I guess. Um, I'm not really expecting streaming to, uh, to become a full-time thing for me. But, you know, if I could do this and start getting a couple other channels going that I want to do um, being able to actually start some of my side projects like make a game or uh, I've got uh, I, I actually have a 3d printer now and so I was gonna start thinking about making uh, miniatures uh, I had this idea for some robots uh, not not really Battletech it, be a little bit more simplified, but something that uh, is basically a bunch of pieces, and then you can customize your own robots out of it. But just, you know, I've got a lot of little side projects that I'm hoping would accumulate uh, and, and be something that I could maybe stop, excuse me, stop doing full-time jobs and actually do something I want to do, something creative. Um, this is awful, by the way. I just saw this. We will not be doing that. Um, and so, you know, maybe with time I would be able to focus on, on series like that. You know, the thing about YouTube is that it seems to be kind of going away. A lot of people have left it as uh, being a source of revenue and, and 
I guess a career. There, there were people who made it into a career, but um, I don't know. I, it's not really. Those people have have a lot of effort into it, like a lot of effort. I mean, and not just in the editing, but in you know if if they're doing uh, stuff like this, um, the the amount of time they have to take to edit and redo, and uh, what what am, what am I even doing at this point? Um, Oh shit, we can just start out right from the beginning. The the choices they have to make regarding whether they want to continue a series or not, just based on viewership. You know, just all those things just were a real turnoff for me for even considering getting into like full time YouTubing or, or even wanting to do that. And uh, I mean it works out for them, but I I just YouTubing has always been a hobby of mine. You know, it's just me playing games most of the time, and that's why I just never really take it as seriously as everyone else. Um, but, you know, even... There, there's a, a channel I watch uh, called Ancient Architects, and it's... I don't really want to say it's, like, alternative archaeology, but it's, it's not totally mainstream archaeology. Basically, it's this guy who researches a lot of, like, I guess uh, ancient civilization theories and and stuff like that. And rather than just you know putting forth like it was aliens, he actually does research into this stuff. And just recently, he was able to do that full time, and that's great for him because the amount of time it would take to research something like that has to be full time for him. You know, I it's, it's not just you know recycling like uh you know the the pyramids were an en energy plant or something like that where someone could just start one of these these uh channels and just pump out the the same thing that's already been done you know for for him it's original stuff because it's not you know it's not pushing that stuff so much as it is like well let's look at the the science behind this let's look at the the history behind this he he goes into very ancient uh I mean, ancient, um, you know, very old accounts of like the first European explorers in uh, the pyramids and, and the first uh, archaeologists that, that opened them up, you know, and so like he, he uses that research to kind of uh, talk about, well, you know, what, what was actually in the pyramids that they found, you know, to all these theories of uh, what they were. It's like, well, this wouldn't have worked because when they actually opened them, you know, these things were in the way and all this stuff. I mean, that alone is just so much research that you couldn't do that just as a hobby, you know. So you, you look at these big YouTubers and they didn't just get big just, just from playing Minecraft. That's probably how all this started. I, I do recall <laughs> that time when Let's Playing was just like everyone had a, a Minecraft channel. But, you know, now you have to have a very dedicated, basically full-time job doing YouTube. And, uh, you know, I just, I don't see myself ever going that way. But some of the, the things that I do want to do um, kind of <clears throat> would be of that effort. Uh, did I, have I mentioned... I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it or not. Uh, one thing I want to do is a... Oh, oh, is that the way the water's going? No. Oh. Well. Um, one, one of the things I want to do is a, a role-playing channel. Like an actual role-playing channel. But not a live role-playing channel. Um, the thing about the, the role-playing stuff is that... It's often just a lot of people over, like, Discord or whatever, and they're very hard for me to watch. I kind of want to watch them, but at the same time I don't, just because I feel like there's so much uh, just real fluff in them. You know, like, it, it's not so much watching a show like, uh, you know, Let's Playing became or whatever. It's more just watching a bunch of friends play a game, and there are more professional role-playing YouTube channels out there, but uh, even those kind of bog themselves down sometimes in metagaming where the players discuss, well, you know, if I do this, then you can use this ability, etc., etc. But, you know, for, for me to watch 
that it, it's kind of hard just because I'm not really interested in that. Like, so, so my idea for this role-playing channel uh, is not really so much like live role-playing as it would be a very edited down kind of series. Kind of like what I did with the, the Sim series or let's just extend this, whatever. Um, or any of these other series that I've, I've had this idea for. Uh, meaning that it would be more like a story, and uh, I would kind of, you know, rather than than the cams and all this, I mean, b basically this would just be me, but uh, rather than the cams and all that, it would be more of a... Uh, have you ever seen, well, basically any JRPG, but like the, the RPG Maker stuff where they've got... You know, the backgrounds and then like the dialogue box characters. Yeah, basically any JRPG. If you've ever seen a JRPG, anything like Final Fantasy or whatever, you know, with the the 2D stuff, um, I would kind of make it look like that. But so rather than being a game, it would just be a, a role playing session uh, with that aesthetic. And I kind of got the idea from uh, some Japanese channels. There's a, a Japanese role-playing game that's, I guess, basically the equivalent of Dungeons & Dragons over there called Sword World. And uh, so, just looking up Sword World videos, I found a couple channels that kind of do that, where they, they've got, uh, obviously, the players talking, but on screen it looks more like one of these JRPG games, where the... Uh, the animated characters are, are the ones that are talking and moving around, and there's, you know, backgrounds for that. And so I, I guess I what I'm saying is that I'd like to make a channel kind of like that, where you're watching a role-playing session more as a show uh, than just as a as a you know just everyone around the table kind of thing that is pervasive on YouTube. I mean, it is everywhere on YouTube. So I'd like to do something a little bit different, and uh, obviously that takes some effort that would take a lot of time and uh, just you know just playing the game alone takes hours never mind the uh, the editing and all the posts that that would entail so you know I, I'm, I'm trying to think of things that I can do to pull myself back from this nine to five real world job that I've got and be able to start doing more creative things again to, to be able to do stuff that I want and, I don't know, it's difficult, but uh, I, I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I've either got the options to just keep doing what I'm doing and hate every minute of it, or just kind of branch out and hope it all works.